And welcome back to Let's Play Gothic 3. This is Mr. Joseph, and uh, this is yet another video in which I'm overlaying audio on top of a pre-recorded video. I will let you know when I get to my next video in which I took the audio at the same time as the video. That will hopefully be very soon, although looking at my list there are quite a few videos left to go, although many of them are very short, and appear to be designed to be linked together among themselves, so it could just be a few videos, but regardless, I digress. So, here we are in uh, Myrtana, and we are looking at the eastern uh, Myrtana map here. And so I've covered this, this trail here, which is the Bandit Highway, or actually that's where I'm going, but I came around the other one that I just showed you there, which was the uh, Ranger Valley. So we're going to go down the Bandit Highway this episode, it looks like. <laughs> You know, folks, it's kind of fun for me to um, commentate on these videos, um, having having made them, yes, but not remembering exactly what I did. And um, so it's kind of fun, um, because it's like I'm watching it with you guys at the same time. So I'm going to jump over here to this, um, this uh, cliff area, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, and just see if there's any plants or anything up here real quick. It doesn't look like it. A lot of the times the game doesn't include uh, plants um, up on cliffs and, th and stuff that, you know, I guess the game assumes you're not going to be up there a lot, or if you are, it's really not a huge deal um, if you are, uh, if there's no, uh, you know, if there's no uh, plants up there or whatever, but in this case, in some cases I should say, there are plants. Okay, so I just jumped down the cliff and ran into a blood fly, so I'm just going to walk back a little ways, again, with my melee skills being a little subpar, it's uh, important that I take these guys on with arrows if possible, uh, so I can avoid getting poisoned. I don't have the resist poison ability yet. Okay, so we've got the uh, blood fly stinger. And we'll go ahead and just uh, run back up the hill here and um, grab this magic root that I missed the first time. And, um, you know, I, I remember this battle, because I just I only did it a few days ago, you know, it's like maybe four or five days ago, uh, the video, that is, and um, I want to say that I might have died a few times, and so I think <coughs> I might, um, after the first time I die, just to demonstrate that it is possible for even amazing people like me to die in this game, okay, I'll get off my high horse, but I want to I wanna demonstrate that... Um, Death is a natural part of this game. You will die if you play this game. It's a great game, and I think any game that is too easy and doesn't allow you to die is too easy of a game. So yeah, you'll probably die if you play this game. It's very hard to not get to get through it without dying. And uh, anyway, I guess what I would say is that um, the key. Well, okay. So in this video, I I don't want to bog you down with. Um, a bunch of videos of me dying, I want to move the game along, so I'll probably cut part of that out, but, um, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to take on this cutthroat with the sword at first, watching out for his little friend who's behind me now, which, uh, his friend is a much better arm, well, he's better armored, but he's got a stick, cudgel, which he can still do some damage with, and once he gets going with it, he will. But so far, I'm doing a okay job at just slicing and dicing. Uh, oh, there he goes. And see, did you see that? Three shots with the uh, cudgel, and I'm dead. And I am uh, joining you again here on Let's Play Gothic 3, having had just restarted the uh, the game. I just quick saved here, um, so I don't have to restart from back where I was. Um, after I died fighting the um, brigands at the top of the hill. So here's attempt number two. Starting, I'm starting my attack with a different target this time. Um, realistically speaking, if you want to kill somebody in this battle uh, out of the gates, you want to go for somebody um, who's maybe not the toughest of all. So I went for a cutthroat who's pretty weak, and I did kill him, although now I have an arrow stuck in my thigh, or at least I did, which is kind of a cool animation. So I'm going to turn around. Hopefully, um, some of them went back, and, you know, I want to take on two or three of them at a time, and no more than that. So, um, I'm just getting a few arrow shots off here. I really would like to concentrate all of my arrow fire on just one, but, uh, unfortunately, there are several. And there's a plant I missed, which I'll get in just a second. But I ran away sufficient to, um, 
throw most of them off the chase, in fact all of them except for, well I'm going to try to shoot him and get him isolated here. Oh, missed. Obviously when you're aiming uphill you have to overcompensate for gravity. Okay, I guess they, the others were close enough that they're going to come down, but this guy's almost dead, so I got him with the arrow. Again, a fled thief, a very weak um, bandit indeed. So now it's just two, and I want to get... I got a nice headshot there. Um, I think I'm going to switch my sword and melee these guys now. Since they're not the um, tougher enemy, they're, uh, even a sword hit from one of these guys is going to do less damage than a cudgel hit from that really tough guy. So, you know, again, the key to these battles just like it was with Ortega previously, you want to make sure that you are isolating them and getting them one at a time, more or less. So, I'm going to run up the hill and do the second aspect of this battle, grabbing a few arrows on my way. Um, so, but as you can see, there's a few dead bodies on the hill, which, you know, one thing I would say about this game that is kind of nice is that when things die, they still exist in the physical universe, as opposed to um, a lot of games where either there'll be a two-dimensional dead body, so I just quick save, or which will go away within a minute, or there will be, you know, a pretend three-dimensional body that is stuck in time and space in a fixed position that doesn't move. Now that, in fairness, that does happen eventually here, and then they do disappear after a few days, but right at first they collapse uh, pursuant to the laws of gravity the, the, gra the physics engine still um, works on their newly dead body and you can move it for a time after they die so you can if, if you kill it let's say you kill a buffalo or a bison or something y uh, you can um, run into it with your feet and push it down a hill or whatever and um, in any event I in any event it's uh, it's a lot more realistic than a lot of games I think so, as you can see, I just killed a highwayman, um, again, isolating him before moving on, and I killed a light-armed bandit. So, I'm getting them one by one, and uh, I think I'm going to quick save here and go for the next one. Okay, so we'll get this deserter. Um, now, he's the guy who killed me the first time. And um, if I remember correctly, I might have died again in this battle. I, f I feel like I didn't die just once. Okay, so, anyway. Um, obviously, shooting the deserter with arrows is not going to work unless he's basically isolated by himself to begin with. So, I'm going to, um, well, I guess I'm going to let a couple of them go back up the hill while I've got these other guys kited. Looks like there's four of them coming at me, which is too many, and I'm not doing a good job at continuing my, uh, arrow fire. But I'm going to melee these guys and see if I can maybe kill one or two of them. I did just quick save, so I'm not too worried about that. If I were smart here, I would just run, yeah, there we go, I'd run away. And uh, I'm going to grab my arrow and maybe I can kite these guys a little bit. If I kite, I mean um, kind of draw them down to me rather than me going to them so that I have the advantage of fighting them on my terms. Again, if I were smart, I would get the hell out of there, yeah. Okay, so... Um, Well, got him, and I just got the one left, and that should be no problem, although I'm a little bit worried that I'm going to screw it up. But we'll see. Okay, I got him, it looks like, so that's great. So I'll pick up their stuff, and we'll go to the next one. And my cat has decided to join me on my lap here. Alright, and um, 
back up the hill we go. So let's see if we can get um, oh, I'll quick save it right quick, and then let's see if we can take out the rest of these guys, or at least one of them. You know, and the key with these kind of battles is y all you got to do is you just keep taking them out one by one. It does take a little while, but it is kind of fun. I think it's fun to watch. It's the action scene of the movie. It's a little bit unrealistic in the sense that if you killed a few of a group of bandits somewhere, chances are the whole group of them would come after you, even if uh, even if you ran away. But it's really the only way to go at this early stage in the game. Now, if you wanted to be realistic about it and have kind of a attitude like, I'm going to go all in and I'm going to attack them and they're going to come and, you know, I'm going to deal with them all at the same time and not run away kind of a thing, then, you know, probably you could do that later in the game when you have better armor and weapons. Or you could, maybe if it was me, it would be magic. So, okay, again, I've died. So I'm going to join you after I reload. Be right back. Okay, and uh, here we are at the hill again. Um, I'm going to try magic this time, so I've gotten my ice lance out, and I've got this tough um, bandit once with it, twice. And so as you can see, the rate of fire with magic, even with the scroll, I had only six of those scrolls, is very fast. And so I've um, more than half killed this guy, and uh, the bow can probably do the rest of the work here. There's a face shot, and just one shot anywhere at this point will kill him, and that was another face shot. So, um, anyway, uh, excellent. I'm glad that I've killed this guy who killed me twice, I think it was, the same guy. And now that he's gone, I think there's only maybe just a couple more at the top of the hill. So, um, I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I'm looking at my lack of having impossible chests. Okay, so I'm going to jump up the hill here. Well, run up the hill. I don't know why I said jump. And um, I'm going to go ahead and grab some plants in the area. It looks like I've killed off all of the uh, bandits in the area. So I'm going to start on this side, which is the uh, east side of the bandit camp. And if you look down that hill, that would be, um, that would be down towards Dominic's cabin. And, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and stay up here, though, and grab these plants, and then we're going to go in that cave over on the west side of the hill. But we'll have to wait for that so I'll um, after all. for just a minute. <coughs> okay, so this highwayman's got a halberd, <coughs> and I think I missed him when I first came over here, so I'm just going to take him out and make sure he doesn't give me any trouble. Okay, and we're quick saving, just to be on the safe side. I think, I thought we were quick saving, maybe we weren't. I, <laughs> I don't know. Would you stop that? So as you can see, there's just a ton of guys left, so I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to repeat what I did earlier and just take them out one by one, but I've decided that I'm not going to show you all that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick it up once I've gotten these guys under control. So I'll be right back. Okay, and here I am at the top of the hill. I've taken out the other bandits that were guarding this cave, and so now I'm just um, essentially looting the chests before I go in the cave itself. I will show you the battle that occurs here in the cave because I think the battle in the cave is actually a lot of fun as most cave battles tend to be. So um some decent stuff in the ca you know obviously I'm going to quick save as much as possible because I just literally died twice but you know some uh, decent looking stuff in the cave and obviously some more thief type folks in the cave. So let's see how we do it taking these guys out. Nice headshot to start the battle. That's always the way you want to start a battle, if you can get a headshot if it's at all possible. That's a really good way, because it gives you the maximum possible damage with your bow.
And, uh, you know, this is pretty routine at this point. You know, I apologize for the gap, and um, I got distracted with my other computer, but um, they're just shooting, so, you know, the thing is you want to strafe from side to side while they're firing at you to avoid getting hit by the uh, arrows. And there's a fled thief. I, I just love the fact that they, what do they, just open an English dictionary and pick an adjective and throw it in front of these guys? I mean, what was the other one that we saw? An impatient tramp or something? I mean... Or was it nervous or um, anxious? Or I can't remember, but it was like impatient tramp. And it's just ridiculous. Um, okay, so obviously I'm missing quite a bit here. I think I'm aiming at his head too, too, too much. I'll just go for his chest. Yeah, just, I mean, like any police officer or military person is trained to go for maximum body mass on uh, ranged weapons like that. Uh, so too should you, unless you can get a pretty good um, chance of getting a headshot or something better. And there are idiosyncrasies with certain, some beasts, like snappers, in which you almost have to get a thigh or directly in the front of the face, and like the neck is doesn't even have like a collision matrix to land into or whatever. So I'm just going to grab some of these arrows. Just it's always good to conserve your arrows. I think that's um, it's, I think it's a great practice, and I think it's more realistic to do that. So I'm going to just peek around this corner and see if there's any uh, other guys still there that I'm going to need to take out before going into this first room. I'm not too worried about getting everything on the sides of the caves right now because my style is to get those later, usually, um, after I've cleared the cave of enemies. I like I like the, um, I just got hit by an arrow sound that guy makes. So, killed, killed another guy or two, and uh, again, this is just an ongoing thing that you're going to want to do. Um, just grab, grab their stuff, but, you know, kill each one, one by one. And I don't really know why I'm looting the sides of the cave right now. I can do that later. I guess I've decided to go ahead and loot this Too chest. Hard. Well, I can't get the chest right now, but I guess I've decided. Um, I guess I decided to go ahead and uh, just loot those uh, plants, and then okay, look at look at that fog, and uh, look at how look at how beautiful that lighting is. I mean, that's just gorgeous. Of course, there is a flaw or an error in the lighting here, and deep deep into that cave up there um, the problem there is uh, I don't think there's an actually a light source at least not the Sun which would cause the light effect that you see there so I just quick saved and I'm gonna go ahead and shoot these guys now there's a glitch in the game based upon the terrain and these guys think they can't come get me because they think the terrain is too steep um, So I'm going to just shoot them and take advantage of it while I can. It's almost like, you know, just to make this a little bit more realistic, it's like they, they keep getting hit by arrows, but, you know, they don't know where it's coming from. Of course, I guess there's nothing realistic about it. If you're getting hit by arrows from down a deep hole in a cave, you'd either go kill whatever was down there, or you would take cover. <laughs> okay, so this guy didn't finally make it down, but fortunately I was able to finish him off with no problem. So go ahead and just keep exploiting them while I can. And it's just a matter of time before I get them. Obviously, um, there's one with an arrow, so I, I do have to avoid his arrows, but... You know, I should be able to take him out before he gets me, and if if I get hit once, once again, I'll probably go ahead and uh, grab a healing item. I hope I'm paying attention to that. A good player would be. <laughs> okay, I got him. And so, 
Um, I'm just, you know, shooting him. And got him there. Yeah, I think I just got a nice face shot on that one. There's a gut shot. I'm going to have to turn and run on this one because he's just too powerful. I don't have full health and uh, he made it down the hill. But I think I can get him at this point. Maybe. Oop. Nah, I got to run. So I'll run back outside here. And I'll get him now. Oops. Okay, there we go. 120 experience. And so I'm going back to the cave and just grabbing the things that I didn't get the first time or whatever, and looting everybody. Um, so my style is to go to the deep part of the cave first and get everything I can there, and then make my way back towards the entrance, and so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to loot the bodies, of course, and, um, you know, I'm, gonna, I, I'm not going to be able to open a lot of these chests, but uh, we'll remember this for later, for sure. Round shield. So that takes care of that chamber. There is a pot up there for cooking um, if I need that later. And I think I've got pretty much everything over Too here. Hard. So I think I just need to get a couple things maybe on the, uh, the walls of the cave over here, or maybe that's it. I think that's it. Okay, so that's the cave. So um, having cleared that, I'm going to just clear the rest of the way down to Dominic's cabin. Um, Let's see what, what we do next. There's a little stone circle. I'll probably kill these rabbits, just get a little experience in meat. But actually, rather than going down and just... This is really easy stuff, so, you know, just you can do that on your own or whatever. I don't need to show you how to kill rabbits or how to search the trees for plants and all that. So I'm going to call it an episode uh, at this point, but just remember, if you've been watching... Um, well, actually, I before I call it an episode, I do need to tell you that I... Um, at this point, I do go see once, Dominic, I get the rent, and, and then I buy some things and I sell all the weapons, yeah. but you don't need to see all that. Uh, or maybe I'll just I'll, I'll clip that in real quick just to show you that, but otherwise the episode's over. So anyway, if you've been watching, thank you, and just remember, Professor Snuggles is looking out for you.